In this video, we will create my custom timer cards. We will create two cards, one for the desktop dashboard and one specific for mobile. This one is based on my mobile media player. If you haven't seen the video, I will link it in the top corner. As always, if you are interested in the full code, you can find the link in the description. Before we start, please make sure you have button card installed. Before we start building these cards, we have to look at some custom configuration that is needed to make this work. I'm using three custom helpers. The first one is just a timer helper. We set the duration to 10 minutes, but in Home Assistant we can set different durations if we like. I am using two sensors. One is called Kitchen Next Timer. This one saves the finishes add attribute of the timer helper. This is basically just to make it easier to access. Then we have a custom template sensor with multiple attributes. This one is based on the washing machine sensor. If you want a more in-depth look at it, I will link the video in the top corner as well. Basically what we are doing is we are saving multiple things into attributes. We save the trigger time, calculate the remaining time by calculating time pass and subtracting it from the total time. We then calculate the remaining percent using a very similar function and lastly we save the end time. We will use these attributes when building the card. Ok, let's start building. We add a custom button card, set our entity to the timer we just created and define a variable called sensor with the custom sensor. We set the name, icon and basic configuration of the card. Show name and show icon is true, show label and show state is false. For tab action we set more info. Let's add our custom field. This is where some of the magic happens already. The first field is the bar field. In the JavaScript code we define two variables, color and state. For state we set 100 minus the percentage remaining attribute of the sensor. After that, depending on the state, we set the color variable again. Now we return some HTML code that basically contains a div with the color as the background color and the state variable as the width percentage. We then add another custom field called rem. In here we add a custom button card. For the entity we return the variable sensor. And in the name we return the remaining state attribute of the sensor. We set show icon to false and style the card. This is quite simple. The card gets width min, background none and overflow visible. And the name gets font size 14 pixel, margin top 10 pixel, font rate 600 and color contrast 20. We then add a custom field named icon1. It contains a custom button card with an icon. In this case I set silverware variant. It also gets very basic styling. For the card we set background color to contrast 1 and 30 pixel width and height. For the icon we set width to 18 pixel and color to contrast 20. Let's start styling the main card. For the grid template areas we have three rows with two columns. First one is RAM and icon 1, second one is name and icon 2 and the last one is just the bar. For the rows we set 24 pixel 1fr and for the columns we set 60% 40%. The card gets a height of 100%, padding 1 RAM and background contrast 2. For IMG cell we set position to absolute. Top 20%, left 40% and overflow visible. The icon gets position absolute as well. With 20 RAM, opacity 20%, color contrast 20 and a transform of rotate minus 20 degree. For the name we set text align left, font size 12 pixel, justify self start, align self center and color contrast 20. Let's style the custom fields. For the bar we set justify self start, width 100%, background contrast 1 and border radius 24 pixel. For the height we use some JavaScript code. If the entity state, so the state of the timer, is not idle we return 12 pixel. Otherwise we return 0 pixel, so the bar will be hidden. For RAM we set justify self start, font size 12 pixel, font rate 600 and align self end. For the height we can copy the same code as we used for the bar. Lastly, we style the icon 1. It gets justified self end with 24 pixel and color contrast 20. And with that, our first card is done. The mobile timer card is based on this card, so to create it, we will just duplicate the card and do some changes. We can basically leave the whole basic configuration of the card, but we will delete the styling and the icon 1 custom field. This time, we just set a custom icon without a custom card. We can do this by returning this HTML code. Let's style the card. For the grid we basically set the same options as we had before, with the addition of the icon on the left in each row. For the rows we set min content and for the columns we set 50 pixel, 1fr, 1fr. The card styling is a bit more complex this time. We set padding to 10 pixel, 20 pixel, background to contrast 3 and height of 80 pixel. 
For now we will set a width of 100%, but we will come back later to change this. Same thing with position static. We add margin 0, bottom 90 pixel, left 10 pixel and Z index 1. This one is important so the card is displayed on top of the rest of the dashboard. We also add a box shadow. I always use a website to generate these and just copy the code in. Right now we can't really see how our card looks, so let's first style the custom fields so we can see what's going on. For icon 1, we set justify self end, align self end, width 24 pixel, padding right 5 pixel and color contrast 20. Now the card looks much better already. Let's continue with the styling of the main card. For icon, we set a width of 30 pixel, color contrast 20, margin right 10 pixel and margin left 5 pixel. I realize this is redundant, but this is what happens sometimes if you are playing around and adapting the cards. For the name, we set text align left, font size 10 pixel, justify self start, align self start, overflow visible, color contrast 15 and margin left 5 pixel. Back to the custom fields. For the bar, we set justify self start, align self start, margin top 10 pixel, width 99%, background to contrast 1 and border radius to 24 pixel. I realized that the card shows the timer icon two times because we copied the code from the other card. So let's change the main icon to silverware variant. For the height of the card, we basically set the same code as we used on the first one. When the time is active, we return 4 pixel, if not 0 pixel. And with that, our timer card for mobile is pretty much done. We just have to make a few more changes to fix it at the bottom of the screen. We go back to the card styling and change position from static to fixed. We also change width from 100% to a calculation for which we take the width of the screen minus 20 pixel. You can see the card is now fixed to the bottom of the screen. And with that our custom timer cards are done. Here you can see how it looks on desktop and mobile. I hope you enjoyed the video and got some inspiration for your own dashboard. If you are interested in the full code for these cards, you can find the link in the description. If you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribed to my channel. Check out my other videos in which I create more custom cards, show off cool hugs cards and a tour of my personal dashboard. I also plan on doing some more livestreams in the future. Thanks for watching.